Hey, this is Dave from Base Stencil. We're going to talk a little bit about registration. And I'm not talking about signing up for class. I'm talking about making sure that one stencil layer lines up on top of another stencil layer so that you don't get muddy stencils. I'm going to use a couple examples to show you what I mean by registration. One example where you don't really need it so much and why it's better to just, to just uh, freehand it. And then in another example where you really need it. Let's get started. My first example is going to be a joystick and I think everyone knows where the lines are on a joystick. So this is going to be one that's pretty easy to register. Uh, let's see how this one comes out. All right, I think that came out okay. Um, it's pretty clear it's what it is. It's a joystick and I painted the black layer first so that I knew where everything else belonged. If I had painted the red layer first, I might not have known that this other, that these blue parts should be aligned up here. I could probably get the black on after I got the red, but if I wanted to paint the black last, I would kind of be stuck because I wouldn't be able to see where everything went. So I painted the black first. And this is a good example of a case when it's good to paint the black first and get everything set where you need it to be and then um, see where everything else needs to fill. And another reason to do that is because th then you can place the image, the whole image, where you know it should be. And the black pretty much gets the boundaries of the entire image. Let's paint something else that's a little bit tricky to do. Um, it's a little trickier to line up the layers. Like we said, we know what a joystick looks like, but there's some other things that we really don't know exactly what it looks like. Organic things like animals have patterns on them and trees have patterns. All kinds of things have patterns that we don't actually know how to predict. And so it's a little harder for us to see how the layers come together. This also gets trickier for stencils that have more than say three or four layers. Like we're gonna paint a five layer stencil. Actually, we're gonna paint four layers on white. So. Uh, let's see how that goes. We're going to paint a peacock. Okay, this is the first layer of the peacock. It's kind of a bright green. I might actually put a little more white over this just to, um, just to make sure that it's going to be a nice bright layer. Um, but, uh, but maybe this is a uh, first step. So the very first layer we put on here, notice that I went ahead and I took around the edges of the stencil before I peel it up. Um, around the edges, I put a little bit of white so that you can see where the edge of the stencil went. Now all the stencils are going to be the same size because they're all cut from the same stuff. So if the stencils are lined up with respect to the edge of the stencil medium and the stencil medium has a notch or something in the corners that you can use to identify where the next layer should go, then you can use this paint that you made here to register every other subsequent layer. And you're going to see that's going to come in handy because when I pull this away, you're going to say, oh no, um, where did the stencil go? Well, you see, <laughs> you see where the pattern is but you also see where the edges of the pattern were. And at the end of this, we can decorate those um, edges as we want to, to hide this. Or you could just use a pencil or some other erasable medium. Uh, spray paint's not so erasable, but um, you could use something, like I said, a pencil will, will do fine there. Notice how this layer isn't really clear how it lines up with the other one, but when you kind of look at what happened here, you can see that this, um, that the green and the red are kind of uh, complementary to, uh, to each other here. So um, there was maybe a tiny bit of overlap because they didn't have it exactly right on the edge, but it's close enough that it's gonna, it's gonna look good when I tighten it up with the darker colors. With the stencil, there's always a little bit of underspray under the uh, edges of the stencil, or usually there is when the surface isn't totally flat. So it's kind of natural for the colors to come together at the edges. And that's why the stencils can be cut exactly to line up with each other, but then still uh, the, the, the colors can mix together a little bit at the edges. It's usually a good thing. Well, I'm gonna say it. I think the joystick really pops and the peacock isn't a big hit. And I don't think I would use this stencil again, but I can tell you, it would be impossible for me to have uh, completed this stencil without some kind of registration here. You see how these 
um, darker areas go into the lighter areas, which go into the most light areas. I think I need more resolution in the feathers of this thing to actually make it make it really work. But this is the idea of the, re the registration. I think I'm actually going to come back and try a, a different, a slightly different example here because this one is a little um, is a little bit wacky. Anyway, that's the basic idea. You don't need registration every time. You don't need registration to do something like this, um, and you should just freehand it um, or just eyeball it. Uh, but registration is really important for something like this. For this one, it actually is easier because you're you're looking at every mark and you're measuring everything and you're lining it right up. And if you do the black first, you're fine. If you had to do the black last here, I'd use registration marks. This one needed registration, but it still didn't come out so great. Um, so so let's just call that one a, a lose. And this is the um, this is the winner over here. The joystick is the winner tonight. This is Dave signing off from Bay Stencil. Hey, this is Dave. Before we give up on this concept, let's try one more. I think I found another one that'll that'll actually show this a little bit better. Um, but in order to do it, I'm going to need to give us uh, a little bit of background color here. Let's try. Um, let's try this. I'm making kind of a muted greenish background color, just using feather duster cap to give us a little bit of uh, lighter. Often you have these bright colors, you have these bright colors that you want to mute down a little bit. That's what we're doing here. Okay, now I've got my background and now I'll look for that stencil that I think will work to show us uh, what we can do with this. What we can do with registration. Okay, that's what I call on the money. Let's see how that comes out. All right, I think we did better with that one. Um, I might have um, enjoyed doing something a little bit with putting some a little bit of a lighter background just on the surface of the bill. And that could be done with the, the lowest layer stencil, which I didn't have available to me. But um, if you wanted to, you could start it up. You could start over again with a with just a slightly lighter um, with a light, slightly lighter uh, color surface. You might have something like that as a lighter color surface, or you might use a, like a yellow or white if you had one, like a parchment white. But actually, I think that's a good example of time when you want the registration to really line up perfectly, because as you can see, we could have guessed, we could have guessed that this line went inside this line, or this line went inside the other line, and we could have like lined it up. But maybe we'd be a little bit off with that. And when you're doing something as as um, specific as this and as recognizable as this, you really want it to be, um, you really want it to be just right. All right, I like that. I like to look at that a lot better. Okay, um, that's it. And this is Dave uh, signing off from Base Stencil. This has all been registration. Take it easy.